What's up guys? Welcome back to A Couple Nurses. This is our new setup and in this video we're going to be talking about things that you can do or things that you should be doing whenever you receive a patient in the ICU. Can we redo that? Let's like look at yeah. Hey guys, welcome to A Couple Nurses. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for all the support. We're doing it a little bit different today, so we've changed up our style. We have our podcast episode as well. So so now, not only are y'all having video video access to our topics that we discussed, but also on our Code Blue and Bullshit, um, you can find us on Spotify or on iTunes. We will also be discussing the same topic, so if you're driving or working out or doing something, you just like to enjoy um, listening to our videos, now you have them at your disposal in your ears. <laughs> so today we're going to be discussing um, some tips and tricks on how to land patients, whether it's an RRT, a new admin, or a transfer patient. So let's go. Let's do it. What it do, it's your girl Monica. Welcome back to Cold Blue and Bullshit. I got my boy here, Darrow. My boy. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. We really love and support y'all and everything that y'all do to keep tuning is in for us. So we are taking a little bit different approach. We are also recording this episode on our YouTube channel. A couple nurses check us out on that. You don't really like dealing with listening to us only. You get to actually see us as well. So yeah. So today we're going to be discussing some tips and tricks on how to land new admins, whether it's an RRT, a transfer, post-op. So let's go. Let me ask you first, what do you think is the hardest type of patient to land? Do you think new admits? Do you think transfers? What do you think is harder out of those two? Honestly, it just depends in the situation and in the state that the, the condition that the patient is being transferred in, right? So for example, I've had a really sloppy RT landing and I've had a really crazy hectic trauma one um, emergency surgery kind of patient to where I had my patient for one minute and literally surgery team came by and took them within like minutes and I didn't even know that they had an emergency yeah. surgery. So I think it really is just, that, that's a hard question because every scenario is different but yet you can compile all the experiences together on how to improve yourself as a nurse but more importantly as an ICU nurse. So for me, I could just share a few of my experiences. Uh, Man, so I had an RRT, and before they had got there, the, the, the day prior, the patient that was in that room went, you know, DNR, they were part of STA, they delivered their, I mean, they donate, not delivered. They, they, what's, what's RRT mean? So a rapid response. So they came, they were already in the hospital on a, on a different unit, and they came because um, altered mental status, they started to become... The classic. You know, they, they started, they're, they're, they had trouble breathing, um, so that's something like that. They needed to be emergently intubated, et cetera, et cetera. But prior to them, what I was trying to say is that the room that was there prior with the other patient about a day ago um, was an STA patient. They had their organs that were being donated. And so the surgery people took that patient with all of the materials in that room, which I didn't know of guys. I, I mean, I didn't have that room assigned to me. They took all the material with them and it's still in the OR. So meanwhile, I get a call from charge and they're like, hey, you're gonna get a new admin. And I was like, cool. I was like, you know, tell me a little bit about him. And he's like, well, it's an RRT, XYZ, this is happening, I don't know much, but they're coming up in the next five minutes. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, holy hell. I was like, okay, cool. So I go in there, we have a great team. So one of my coworkers, she's helping me fill the room and then another tech is coming in helping me fill the room. And so we're all just like really working together trying to get this. Um, I look at the monitor, literally no cords, none whatsoever oh, at all. And I was just like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. I call RT already, make sure that they have the vent. Like I kind of had a little stuff ready. Um, patient comes in, they start aspirating. I had no suction in there. Oh, the, the thing is, it's an RRT, you know? You, you learn through situations like that though. Like for me, I've landed a couple patients early on where I didn't know that I had to call a uh, respiratory therapist if they were being transferred with a vent and all that stuff. So I'm in the room waiting for like 10, 15 minutes. You know, you're supposed to call respiratory whenever you know you're getting your patient. So those are things you learn. You know, to have a suction in there, like that's basic. Yes. Bamboo bag, basic. Absolutely. But now with that experience alone, um, 
I've gotten really, really good at, if I just have one patient and I know I'm gonna be expecting another, another admin, whether it's trauma, post-op, uh, transfer, some, some, something. Well, when I have, you know, once I get caught up or even every, ever so often I go check, I say, okay, what's in the room? Do I have my cords? Do I have an A-line clip? Do I have an A-line cord? You know, do, do I have a bear hover? Because if you're going to get a trauma, you know, let's say gunshot wound or auto pedestrian head, like, you know, you need to start thinking of these, these things. And these are all, um, these are all just clues and tips that I've gotten literally from all my experiences. And so now i literally assess the room and make sure that everything's in there but as i mentioned before when cordero asked me you know what kind of situations i've had it, it's so different because i if, if you have a, a, an open if you're open for admin and you know you can check and you can control your environment awesome but let's say you got two patients you know you you discharge one of them and then the other one comes in RRT literally five minutes, you know, within five minute gap after, you know, you getting this mini report or knowing that you're getting an RRT. That's a little bit different. That's, yeah. it, it's, it's all scenario based, but I have definitely learned how to lay my patients and I'm getting so much better at it every single day. And like I said, I'm super thankful for the team that I work with because they do, they set you up for success. And not only that, but the stuff that I learned from so many other nurses is making me be a more uh, just self-sufficient nurse and it seemed like in a way you just turned like you're just snowballing like all this knowledge is just like like you're rolling down a hill like just getting bigger, bigger. <laughs> yeah absolutely i think some very basic things that no matter if it's a new admit or if it's a transfer or a patient you know post-operation that you should ha always have blood pressure cuff a brand new blood pressure cuff pole socks <laughs> yonker the suction canister, uh, CHG wipes, especially for new emits. So you get a really good skin assessment when you use the CHG wipes at the orange ones. Have you seen those? The CHG. Yeah. So you wipe them down. When you wipe them down, you're able to really look at their skin. Sometimes people don't get a good skin assessment in, and then it's on your unit if there's if they came in with the sore. Absolutely. Love that you said all that because you know your girl is a skin champion. What what? Skin okay. Champion, <laughs> So I'm part of a UBC for the skin champions, and so I'm huge on skin assessments. What else should we add? What do you mean? What else? What else is very basic? Did I miss anything? Honestly, I am the person. New I need my ambu bag. New gown, chucks. Ambu. My priorities are ambu bags, suction canisters, y'all. Ambu bag, suction canisters. When that patient and lands. Pulse socks, dude. I missed the pulse. Like I had to admit four or five days ago, and it took me like 15 minutes to notice that the patient had the pulse socks. Like I was like, I was like. I was like, this is a COVID positive patient. I was like, I was like, what am I missing? You know, you look at the monitor and you see everything. I'm like, hmm. And the RT came in and they were just like, what's the sad? So I'm like, oh. They ain't never happened to me. <laughs> it's I'm not gonna lie. No, but the thing is, we didn't have the cord in the room. So, you know, the cord that hooks up to the monitor, we didn't have the cord. So, usually when you see the cord and it's empty, it kind of prompts you to. Right. Yeah, that's why that's why with my first example when I literally did not have shit in the room Now that is the first thing that I look at in my room you get burned once. Yeah, see our hospitals are a little bit different We have these little carts that we can put supplies into and uh, Typically the the techs are responsible for taking care of that portion of the setup But do they always do it right? Absolutely not you have your all-stars and you have your not so all-stars so I always get in the habit of checking that and sometimes honestly I just grab that by myself, go in the supply room and fill it with the things I know I'm going to need, especially if I've gotten a good report from the nurse, um, if it's not an RRT situation. So yeah, most definitely. So some takeaways that y'all can learn from this is definitely assess your room. <laughs> Uh, once your patient comes in on the floor, make sure you got your ambu bag, suction, and at least two IVs that actually work. <laughs> and Cordero is absolutely right. Have your, uh, you know, your skin things, your gown, your wipes, your alevins, your foam dressings, um, IV starter kits, all that good stuff because you just really never know what you're going to get, especially with your RTs. Um, for me, another challenging experience I had that I think was a little bit more challenging than the RRT is getting a, like I said, that trauma one um, patient that was just actively bleeding.
bleeding and they came post so I had him for like 10 minutes and then they took him to surgery and once he landed on the unit I had no orders zip this guy's waking up he's intubated he's going batshit crazy and so that experience um, allowed me to learn, okay, this is your scope of practice, you're an ICU nurse, go pull some fentanyl push out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ask the doctor, say, I'm, I'm pulling out XYZ, if a fentanyl is just okay, they're gonna be like, yes. That is, that is why it's really helpful to know your doctors and- Know your drugs. Know your doctors, know your drugs, and most of the time, you kind of know the cocktail that your doctors will go for, mm -hmm. like, pretty generally. Absolutely. Uh, you know, if the patient's intubated. A lot of times in our unit, they're going to have fentanyl, Presidex, propofol, or said something that's sedative and then something for pain. That's like, like very basic for our floor. Now Monica, she has, she's on a neuro floor, so some of the things that, that they do is a little bit different. A lot of their patients aren't as sedated as ours. Also, what's very important is communication. So communication between your team, communication between you and your charge, communication whenever you give reports. So if a patient's transferring and they've been crashing and you hear that where they're coming from ED or another unit that they're on, you know, 10 mics of Epi and a lot of Levo and they've got like two boluses. In your mind, you're thinking, okay, this patient may need a central line, you know, or if they're getting a bunch of infusions or may need a lot of infusions. So I like to kind of already have some of that stuff bedside, like the central line kit, everything for the doctors, their gloves, so that way you're not running back and forth or don't have to ask anyone to run back and forth. At the end of the day, it comes down to communication. So you have to ask these questions when you get a report and talk to the doctor to know if he knows if the patient's coming or not and see what he may want in the room with him. In what situations would you have a patient coming from another floor on an epidrip? On an epidrip? Yeah, you said epidrip. I mean, if a patient is crashing on another floor um, and then ACLS, you start epi. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, something that I've really taken away also is it's it sounds silly and it's super common sense now that you think about it, but let the first call physician know. <laughs> Usually first call for instance is a residency hospital. Let them know that your patient is there. That took me I don't know why it took me so long to realize. I think it was just I was more so I was more concerned with the actual patient and trying to care for them and trying to be in charge of everything and that's on my personality because I sometimes feel like I'm responsible for the whole entire care which I am but you also have a team that you need to utilize your resources but as soon as that patient lands or as soon as they're on their way call call the nurse practitioner the PA first call residents and if those aren't any of your options then just call the damn doctor and let them know like hey my patient's on their way it makes things so much smoother because then they're already there as soon as they land they see the state and the condition that the patient is in at that time and you get your orders so much quicker thank you we pretty much summed it up absolutely yeah so hope you guys enjoyed the video check out the podcast and until next time peace out peace.